Bev and her small team of five have between 8am and 2pm to clean all 72 rooms. Are you OK with those? Yeah. Oh, God. What a stink. No, it's one of those where to start. We'll start by finding where the smell's coming from, basically. <laughs> like the golf course groundsman, Ullersthorpe pay head housekeeper Bev just over the minimum wage and expect each room to be cleaned in just 15 minutes. Oh, what a stinking mess. I can see uh, nappies and uh, filthy towel on the floor. It's disgusting, isn't it? Absolutely disgusting. Oh, my goodness me. It shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes. Right. OK? I did do some cleaning at home. Uh, two or three weeks ago, and uh, before that, I dread to think. Ow! I turned the shower. Toilet? Yeah, all that's Toilet's been okay. clean. Okay, needs another brush. It just needs no, I didn't. buffing up because it's got a water splash mark on it. Well, you are meticulous. Okay, and then your mirror. David wants to know if Bev's relentless schedule is a result of the hotel prioritising its investment in the golf course. So no yeah. staff have been laid off or anything? Uh, we did lay two off in, in January. We laid oh, really? two off, but... Um, so you're doing more rooms, but you've got less, less staff? People. Yes. So obviously we just have to go a bit quicker and just do a little bit extra. And a lot of the girls do stay over when they finish at 2 o'clock. They will stay till 3 or 4 even. So yeah. you're working harder, faster... And longer. How are you going? Hi. I was talking to, to Bev about um, the number of people that look after cleaning the rooms. There doesn't seem to be many of you. <laughs> Some days when we're really busy, it would be mm. nice to have a few more. I'm really letting Bev down to her, I really <laughs> am. Is she a hard taskmaster? No, no. Yeah. She, she's in there with us helping if we, you know, we're running behind. She is here sometimes before seven in the morning until seven at night. Has Bev got a family? She's got two boys and a girl. The son, Mark, he has problems from birth, and she was in Great Ormond Street for a long time with him. Well, must have been pretty yeah. sick then, if you... Yeah, he's sort of on medication for life. Oh, that's no, OK, I don't that's... think it's so bad that side, mm, is it? Okay. The girls were telling me about Great Ormond Street. My son went there for 16 years, yeah. Cos that's a charitable... Yes, yeah. We did um, little fates and things like that um, to raise money for them, and I just give um, every month myself. It's not a great deal, but it's, it's you know, something. You cast that aside as though it's um, sort of ordinary, but I guess it's not easy to make ends meet in this day and age, is it, really? So if no, your penny but counts... So... If it wasn't for them, Mark wouldn't be here today, so you have to remember that. If everybody just gave a small amount, it would make a big difference, wouldn't it? So that's the way I look at it, you know. Bev, you are working very hard, working long hours, and you've just got that team around you, haven't you? They respect you enormously. You've had your son at Great Ormond Street Hospital for the first 15 years of his life. Yes. I tell you, I'm very impressed by you. For me, a big, big thank you. Thank you. And on behalf of Best Western, we'd like to give a cheque to Great Ormond Street. The cheque is for two and a half thousand pounds, and it's to to say it means a lot to us. And I know Great Ormond Street means a lot to you. Thank you. That means a great deal. Worth all the hard work. Thank you very much. I'm just overwhelmed with it. No one's ever done anything like that before, and it's really marvellous. Mm -hmm.